Greetings, Tarnished! The DLC for Elden Ring is coming out soon, and I think many of you are considering replaying your favorite game, or possibly playing it for the first time before DLC release. Today I'm here to offer you a guide, where in the first few hours of the game you'll get excellent places to farm runes, consumables, and get the best starting melee weapons. At the beginning it doesn't really matter which class or the keepsake you choose. For me it's just cooler to see in the character menu that I'm I'm a hero and that I don't need any keepsakes. But if you want to focus on effectiveness, Samurai has the best weapon among all other classes. And Hero has the least useless stats for the melee character. For keepsakes, choose either the Crimson Medallion to have more HP at the beginning, or the Golden Seed if you want to quickly max out your healing flask. But anyway, you'll be able to find both of these through the game. The first boss. If you, like me, have trouble with the OCD, then I think you definitely want to deal with this grafted scion. It's not necessary, but if you insist, it's killed quite simply. Run around the creature until it starts that combo attack, then roll to his left and attack twice during this attack. Then break the distance and repeat until it's dead. Ah, we are released from the stuffy dungeon and the local air is just magnificent. As we know, it's always easier to breathe when you have at least $500 in your pocket. So the first thing we want to do is to get our first farm spot. For this we need a horse. So we immediately run to this marker, which marks the map fragments that dispel the fog of war. Once we pick them up, we see that the nearest site of grace and accept Melina's offer. Now we have the torrent calling ring and the ability to level up. Now you need to wait until night and return to the church of Eli to receive spirit calling bell from our second waifu. After acquiring the items, I usually collect various additional useful things, such as seeds to improve our flask of sacred tears and all of that. But you can do that later by using interactive map. For now we head east, and on the way we can loot the cemetery. Our main goal is the third church of America. Here we can loot a couple of useful items, such as a flask of wonders, physic, and sacred tear that increases amount of HP restored by our main flask. But the most important thing is the hidden portal behind the bushes, which will take us to a completely new part of the map. Of course, you can run to this new area on your own without using the portal, but... <sighs> All enemies here will give you a huge number of runes upon their death, even though they can almost kill you with just one hit. However, it doesn't matter, since we don't need to fight them to farm runes. We just need to reach this side of grace. And now as you run to this spot, a ball will spawn behind you, trying to run you down. You just need to turn right when it spawns, and the ball will fall into the abyss, giving you 2000 runes. Okay, sit in the side and Melina will teleport you to the round table hole. And I advise you to buy a shield from the local vendor, that provides 100% protection against physical damage, which will come in handy for us. It would also be useful to purchase a dagger to move faster through the swamps and a finger seal to cast some magic buffs if at some point you decide to level up faith a bit. In general, access to this area will be sufficient for most people to play game comfortably. However, I suggest we finish our task of overpowering the character. For this, I propose going here from our farming spot, looting the nearest cemetery along the way. In short, let's activate the Sight of Grace, we'll need it later, and run into the castle. Here again, we don't need to fight anyone. All we need is just this part of the medallion in the chest, then falling here and here, pick up the golden rune, jump, fall again and take this talisman, which are perfect for starting the game, since it give an incredible boost to your stats. After receiving Radagon's Sword Seal, all we need is a weapon. I suggest taking the one you can use until the end of the game, and on a new game plus, the Meteoric Orb Blade. Here is its location on the map. While you're around there, I suggest collecting everything lying on the ground and activating all the sites of grace along the way. The katana we need is located in this dungeon. We just need to get there without fighting anyone. Jump into the basement and kill the caterpillar, blocking the door we need to open. By the way, during the animations you're invincible, but even if you die somehow, don't worry, there is a stake of America nearby. 
Now we had an excellent blade that we can dual wield with another overpowered katana later in the game. But first we need to learn how to use this one, because our stats are a bit too low. Thanks to our talisman we only need a few more levels. We can get them at our farm spot or by using the runes we collected along the way. Now we have a great tool for battles, that we will upgrade soon by going to the blacksmith, but not one in the round table. We need Ichi, the giant blacksmith, in the Liurnia of the lakes. We don't want to go through the bosses, instead we'll take a detour. Just go under that bridge and to this bridge. And here's the path to the new location, without needing to assault the castle. The first thing what we must do in the Liurnia, collect fragments here and here. Then open the map and we'll see an octagons. That one has the portal that leads us to the last third map fragment of this location and to the best starting merchant. After passing through the illusory wall we'll find them. He sells some smithing stones, which we need for our weapon. Buy one stone of each tier from him and upgrade our katana to plus four. It will cost our 17 and a half thousand runes, which is not a big deal for us now. Someone will say farming a ball for the sake of upgrading weapon is tedious. But I will say that running all over the map, looking for smithing stones scattered around the world, constantly alt-tabbing, that is tedious. So having collected the necessary amount of runes, we return to the blacksmith and upgrade our katana to plus 4. And if you have any remaining runes, use them to enhance vigor. HP cannot be redundant. If you want more weapon variety, you can get the bloodhound's fang here. It's an excellent two-handed weapon with high damage and bleeding, similar to katana. If you really like two handed swords, you can try it. Be sure Ichi has enough stones to upgrade it to plus 4. Also, to upgrade your meteoric blade or fang to plus 5, go here. This somber smithing stone is just lying on the ground, practically unguarded. Now it's time to increase our farming speed. With the help of Patches, who settled in the Murkwater cave, an unpleasant enemy may invade us at the entrance here. So to avoid risking it, I suggest not engaging in a fair fight and just running away from him for a while, until Yura, the quest character, come to help us. Wait until Finger aggress onto Yura and only when they start fighting each other, eliminate the phantom from behind, like a rat. There won't be any serious enemies in the cave itself, except for the patches, who can be easily dealt with, especially with a shield. The main thing is not to kill him and stop attacking after he starts surrendering. Just wait, and from the boss of the cave he will become a wender. Talk to him, choose any dialogue option, teleport back to the beginning of the dungeon and return to the patches. Now we can trade with him. We need to buy the cookbook for 800 gold, and preferably these three gold pickled fall fits for 600 each. When used, these feats temporarily increase the runes you receive by 30% for 3 minutes, and the cookbook allows you to craft them indefinitely. To able to craft items, simply buy a crafting kit for 300, 300. runes from the trader at Church Ele. I also haven't forgotten about the civil pickled fit that increased the chance of item drop from enemies. Their cookbook is located in the Smoldering Temple here. Just teleport to the Third Church of America, jump a couple of times and just loot this dude. NPC invader can invade here. Do what you want with them. <laughs> To quickly and unlimitedly craft these pickle foods, we first need to unlock this village in the East Liurnia. There we have an endless source of raw fruit. Collect it on a horse, sit at grace, and bushes with it will respawn. Next, at the first sight of grace in the game, we descend this path to the merchant and buy a bow with arrows from him. Then we head to the Weeping Peninsula location. To quickly open the local map, we need to run forward to here, then turn around and run along this path to this building, the 4th Church of America, stopping at various other churches along the way to loot them. In the 4th Church there is an ideal site of grace to farm ingredients, where we easily obtain full fits by simply descending here and shooting birds. And to replenish the supply of golden fireflies, we drive from the same site of grace to this small swamp. If you need silver fireflies, please follow me into this dungeon. And here, after a short run, they can also be farmed excellently, without fighting anyone. Just ignore these wolves. The local boss is not interesting to us too. Unless if we kill him, it will be more convenient for us to teleport out of this dungeon without having to exit it. Well, now that we have reserves of pickled full fit, I suggest putting the golden one in the 
quick slot. This way, if we accidentally kill a boss, because we don't immediately receive runes for it, you can quickly use the foot to increase the number of runes we'll get. Okay, we've opened up all the important farming areas for now. It's time to strengthen our character. As I mentioned before, you can explore the world and collect sacred tears and golden seeds using the interactive map if you want. But the most important thing is to collect talismans and other valuable items. In this same weeping peninsula, there's a merchant selling a lantern that will light up dark areas without taking up a slot, like a torchwood. Additionally, there is a wonderful turtle shield here that regenerates your stamina and it's extremely useful if you wear it on your back. Great, now let's collect the best talismans available at the moment, in case if you unlock new slots for them or if you want to replace your Radagon source heal. The turtle talisman for stamina regeneration, not to be confused with the shield. We pick it up here, without any fight, no one guards it. But we will have to spend one stone sword key, which can be easily purchased from the twins in the round table hall for 4000 runes. The shield with the dragon crest is located near the temple, where we teleported at the beginning. Leaving the building, turn right, find such a decent jump showing your parkour skills, uh, jump again, and again, and again, and... <clears throat> Here is our wonderful talisman that reduces received physical damage. And the talisman for strength, Starcorch Heirloom, is located in the Gale Castle. Before entering it, I strongly advise you to pick up Flame Grant Me Strength Incarnation behind the castle, for which we have already bought a finger seal. Do this on horse, ignoring the heads with flamethrowers, and head to the castle. In principle, you can avoid fighting anyone here. All we need is to quickly reach the chest where the talisman is. Now we just need to find the tears for Flask of Wonders Physic. Using this potion significantly increases your damage for 3 minutes, but in my usual manner I remembered about this only before Margit. So to prevent you from repeating my mistakes, I recommend collecting these tears now. Let's start with the tier that increases intelligence. It's located near the EG side of Grace. All you need to do is go down here to the stone. And there, on the bowl, will be the tier we need. The main thing is to run away from here as quickly as possible after looting it, cause tier is guarded by strong mobs, unlike the tier that increases dexterity. It is located at this point of the map, and is guarded by no one but a poor albiner. Put these two tiers in our potion, use it before the boss, and congratulations, you have a completely free damage boost. Now onto the final stretch. The last two steps can be done in any order, depending on whether or not you're ready to use spirit summons. If you're ready, don't hesitate and head to the abundant cave. We'll need our dagger for this, so equip it in the second slot so we can use its Ash of War to pass through the poisonous swamp, and then quickly switch dagger to the main weapon. Run along this path until you reach a fog wall. Be ready to prepare your golden foot. If you decided not to strain yourself, prepare the spirit summon bell. But if you're an ultra MLG pro gamer, warm up your fingers. Clean road knights are pretty challenging if you're facing them without spirits, primarily because you need to kill the first one quickly, before the second one arrives and they gain a numerical advantage. Remember that your katana can stagger them with a heavy attack, so try to deal as much damage as possible with heavy attacks at first. When the second knight joins in, use a running heavy attack. And when you one on one with the last knight, just spam him with heavy attacks. Unlike the first knight, he can't block, so you shouldn't have any problems. I managed to defeat them with plus 4 meteoric blade and without a flask buff, so I believe that if you do everything right and don't forget half of a guide like me, the fight will be even easier. But if you're using the most basic unupgraded wolf summon, it will turn this fight into a complete clownery. But honestly, these knights are just two regular mobs with a large HP bar, so don't worry about them too much, that's not even a real boss fight. Once you defeated the last knight in this dungeon, you get a talisman that increases your rune gain by 20%. Well, go get some free levels! If you feel like you're not strong enough to defeat these knights, you can still get these levels without the golden scarab. 
At that side of Grace, where we took our Radagon Source seal, there lies a giant dragon, and we would have beat it until tomorrow if our katana did not have the bleeding status effect, which, when accumulated, takes a percentage of enemy's maximum HP. So we boldly start poking the dragon, but don't rush with changing the old talisman to a new one. Make sure you have enough stats for your katana, or else the bleeding won't work. When the dragon has only a little HP left, use the golden fall foot, and as soon as the dragon begins to die, change our talisman to the golden scarab, and with the scarab and golden foot, we get this amount of runes. Spend runes on what interests you, but make sure you have at least 23 intelligence, 13 points in dexterity, and 10 in strength. Spend other runes on HP and buff stamina a little bit. We need much vigor to don't have any problems with strong attacking enemies, because our damage will be high anyway. The Swyvern is not the end of our to-do list for the evening, or rather, the night, because this mini-boss only appears at that time on the bridge near our farming spot. Aggro him, lead him here, and he falls, after which we immediately use the pickled foot. I get a little carried away on the footage and didn't use a golden foot or wear a talisman, so instead of 60,000 runes I got only 40. Don't be like me, have more attention, don't forget to use golden foot and wear a talisman. But okay, you can always make up 20k by running balls. Especially with all buffs, if you don't forget to apply them, balls instead of 2000 runes per run gives you 3000. After such a hard leveling up, I think the last thing we need is to get the top weapon for our build. And I recommend Moonvale. It can be found in the Gale Tunnel. It drops by the Magma Worm boss. I think everyone who followed the guide should have enough strength to beat him by this point. In short, just spam jump attacks and Ash of War. The worm will start to break out of poise and can do nothing to you. So, we get another top tier katana. Buy another pack of stones from EG, sharpen our second gun to plus 4, take it in the main hand, so that instead of useless Asha 4 of Meteoric Blade, we use Asha 4 from Moonvale. And now we have two great dual wield katanas with scaling from the same stats. As you can see, the damage from a quick attack in dual wield does more damage than a heavy attack in two handed grip. If desired, it is easy to switch Meteoric Blade to a Turtle Shield and use Moonvale in two handed grip. For example, against such opponents as Clearnord Knights or these miners, who are afraid only of heavy attacks, and therefore dual wield against them is not as useful, though it gives more DPS. And if you really like the gameplay with a shield, I recommend the Gilded Great Shield that can be obtained from this Knight of Godric, in the place where we got the torrent. Don't forget about the Silver Foot to increase your item discovery stat. And before I forget, by this point in my gameplay I just remembered about the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Since I already told you about the tiers that buffs intelligence and dexterity, now that you have a powerful weapons, I don't think it would be hard to get an even more powerful tier. It's located here. To get there, first run to this place, jump up, activate the Sight of Grace, just in case, and go around the mountain until you see this Tower of Sauron. Try to avoid being seen by that eye. Run to this side of grace, and you can already see that small earth tree. Kill the earth tree avatar, and you'll get a tier that increases our magical damage. I'll remind you that both of our katanas, in addition to physical damage, deal magic damage. This boss at our level is pretty easy. The main thing is to try not to aggro the smurfs next to him. If you want some more defense, there's a tier that grants a buff similar to Quen from the Witcher, which will protect you from the 90% of the damage from the first hit you receive after drinking the potion. This is extremely useful if you decide to fight bosses that are 100 levels above you for some reason. By the way, for those who really enjoyed the Bloodhound's Fang, if you want to use it in dual wield, you can get the Omen Cleaver from this monster near this bonfire and Gothic Castle. To do this, quickly kill Margit, although we would have killed him anyway, he drops the second slot for talismans. As you can see, under all the buffs, he can do absolutely nothing to us. And you want to say this is a difficult game? A game that gives a challenge? Yeah, sure. Next, run over here, and from this bonfire, again buffed with silver foot, you can farm the cursed one for his omen cleaver, which can be upgraded with regular smithing stones, which is beyond our main build, so you can see the location of these stones on the interactive map. In the end, I recommend you get the best talisman in the game, Air Tree's Favor, which can be found in the starting cave behind this fog wall, which can be opened with two stone sword keys. If you don't have them, just buy it from the twins at the round table hall. And in general, it's better to spend all the runes before you go into this dungeon. Run along this path.
Here it is, the talisman we need. Of course, you can clear the location, kill all the enemies like a professional sports player, but um, I would rather skip this stuffy place. The best thing here we already looted. And for other stuff in this dungeon, you can come back at the end of the game, just to get a golden seed, for example. By the way, if you haven't gotten the golden scarab yet, I think now is the time to do it, as your character at the peak of strength. You've already obtained Bloodhound's Tap Ash of War from Knight Cavalry Miniboss, which is a better version of the Dagger Sash of War, so I suggest using it to move through the swamps now. Equip it on any weapon with the least weight, so it's convenient to hold it in the second slot. Don't worry, you can reassign this Ash of war to any other weapon at any time, and it won't cost any resources. I think now it won't be difficult to kill these douchebags. Moonvale just destroys them. Well, next up is the boss Godric the Grafted, and before him you can talk to Nephili Lux here, so that you don't miss her talisman. It's not particularly strong, and there are better versions of it, but if you want a collection it won't be redundant. As for me, well, I'll probably upgrade the healing flask, just remembered about this. Anyway, before I forget, please leave a like, comment below, subscribe, thanks for watching and see you later.